Uh, well, thank you very much, Robin, for your hard work. Uh, thank you for Roma's hard work. Uh, thank you for your advocacy uh, for rural Ontario and for munis rural municipalities across the country. Um, it is great to have Brian Rossborough with us as well. Uh, thank you for your hard work and your advocacy for this important project. Um, I also want to thank uh, two other people who are here with us today and made today's announcement possible. Uh, James Wan. James, maybe you want to just indicate who you are. Um, uh, of the CIB, he's the broadband director. And Terence Foran of the CIB, um, he is the director of policy there. Um, so thank you very much for your role in today's announcement. Bonjour. J'aimerais d'abord reconnaître que nous sommes réunis sur les territoires traditionnels de nombreuses nations, dont les Mississauga du Credit, les Anishinaabeg, les Chippewa, les Haudenosaunee et les Wendat. I am really glad to be here with the hardworking, really critical team of the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. That's Brian uh, and his team, and with the Rural Ontario Municipal Association. Um, Robin, thank you again for the work you and uh, the other rural mayors do. So important, your voice advocating for rural communities across the province. I do want to start by highlighting some good economic news. Earlier this month, the Bank of Canada lowered interest rates, making Canada the first G7 country to do so. Inflation in Canada has now been within the Bank of Canada's target range for five months in a row. Wage growth has now outpaced inflation for 16 months in a row. And today, almost 1.3 million more Canadians are working compared to before the pandemic. The OECD expects the Canadian economy to see the second fastest rate of growth among the G7 this year and the fastest growth in 2025 tied only with the United States. After our budget was tabled in April, Moody's and S&P, two of the leading credit ratings agencies, reaffirmed Canada's AAA rating with a stable economic outlook. These are powerful economic proof points. They show that Canada's economy is strong and resilient. They show that our economic plan is fiscally responsible. And that really matters because it means that we can afford to make the investments in Canada and Canadians that Canadians need. Our government is delivering fairness for every generation. And our plan absolutely includes Canadians who live in rural and remote communities. An important part of delivering fairness for Canadians in these communities is ensuring they have access to the same quality of services as everyone else in Canada, including high-speed internet. That's why our government is today investing $2 billion through the Canada Infrastructure Bank to connect 430,000 more Canadian homes to high-speed internet. Since 2015, our government has supported expanding high-speed internet for Canadians, including in rural communities. In fact, in 2016, 84% of Canadians had access to high-speed internet. By 2022, this figure had increased to almost 94%. These investments are part of a broader effort by our government to meet our target of ensuring 98% of Canadians have access to high-speed internet by 2026 and 100% by 2030. This financing, the Canada Infrastructure Bank, is working with Canadian internet service providers and public sector funding partners to build the infrastructure needed to connect rural and remote communities to high-speed internet. Having faster, better access to the internet makes a big difference in Canadians' quality of life. It means better access to work, to school, to health care, and to the people you love. And everyone deserves that access, no matter where they live. And as finance minister, I also know that faster internet access is important for our economy and for our productivity. 
It means each hour of the day can be used more efficiently. It means we can study, we can conduct business more quickly and more easily. That's why our government is stepping up to fill this gap and to deliver fairness to Canadians in rural and remote parts of the country. I really, again, want to thank the CIB for the essential role it plays in this project. And above all, I want to thank Robin, the mayors she represents, for working so hard for their constituents, for advocating so passionately on behalf of rural communities across Ontario. Thank you very much. Really glad to be here with you to make this announcement. Our government is acting now and acting with purpose because we know that Canadians are counting on us. Thank you. We will now take questions from media. It'll be one question and one follow-up. Please state your name and media outlet before asking your question using the microphone. Stay une question et nous suivi. Voyez indiquer votre nom et votre média avant de poser votre question. Maintenant, la première question. Good afternoon, Marika Walsh with the Globe and Mail. Um, Deputy Prime Minister, can the Prime Minister still stay on to lead the Liberal Party into the next election, given that you just lost one of the safest seats in the entire country last night? Yes, he certainly can. Can you explain why? Because everybody we're hearing from behind the scenes believes that the result last night means catastrophic losses across the country. If you cannot win in Toronto under Justin Trudeau, why should, he, why should anybody believe you can win anywhere else under him? Our government is focused on working hard for Canada and Canadians and on delivering results for Canada and Canadians. That is what the Prime Minister is focused on. That is what we are all focused on. The Prime Minister is committed to leading us into the next election, and he has our support. Hi, next question. Hi, Minister Barbara with iPolitics. Um, still about last night's results in Toronto, St. Paul's. Uh, do you think the Liberals need a radical change in strategy and that perhaps a new leader in the party might be a necessary change? I just answered that question. Um, let me say the Prime Minister is focused on delivering for Canada and Canadians. Our whole government is focused on delivering for Canada and Canadians. That's what we're going to continue to do. The result in St. Paul's is certainly disappointing. We knew it was going to be a hard fight. I think it's especially disappointing because so many of us know Leslie. We know how hard she and her team worked. And I do also want to congratulate Don Stewart. He and his team worked hard as well. We know that these are hard times for Canadians. We know that we have to work hard to earn back their trust. And we know that the way to do that is by delivering for them, by delivering fairness for every generation, by delivering investments in housing and infrastructure, including in rural broadband, the investment we're announcing today, by delivering investments in making life more affordable for Canadians, with things like dental care, which is being rolled out this month to kids under 18, by delivering on a national program of early learning and child care. Already families in Ontario are saving more than $8,000 per child, but we need to get to $10 a day and be sure there are enough spaces for all the families that want a space. We need to keep on delivering investments in our economy and in economic growth. I was at a car parts plant yesterday and I could see the brilliant work the people working there are doing, the workers, the innovators. They need our support so that Canada can be on the cutting edge of the 21st century global economy. And we know that we need to deliver all of those investments in a fiscally responsible way so that inflation can continue to stabilize. It's now been within the Bank of Canada's target range for five months in a row. That's good news. We have more work to do so that the Bank of Canada can continue its work bringing rates down. Um, and why exactly do you think uh, the Liberals are failing to retain voters in, in writings like St. Paul's that you know the party held for decades? Uh, what is going on? I think I already answered that question. And, and I'll just say, um, 
this is a disappointing result. Uh, we take it seriously. Um, we, know, we, we know that things are hard for people in Canada. And we know we have to work even harder delivering for Canadians, winning back the trust of Canadians. That's what we're all committed to do. Next question. Bonjour, Madame Freeland. Christian Noel de Radio-Canada. Uh, Minister Freeland. Mark Ramsey with the Toronto Star. Yesterday before the by-election, you well, said... Well, I'll take one more. Yesterday before the by-election, you said the Conservative choice was cold, cruel, and small. Then Canadians in a riding that has been dominated, dominated by your party for years disagreed with you and made that choice. If you don't have your finger on the pulse with voters in Toronto, St. Paul's, which voters do you have an understanding of? Thank you for the question. And, you know, this is a disappointing result for us. And we take the result really seriously. We know that Canadians are hurting right now. And we know that we have to work hard to win back their trust. We have to work hard to deliver for Canada and Canadians, to deliver with things like building more homes faster, to deliver with programs that make life more affordable for Canadians, like dental care, like early learning and child care, to deliver with investments to grow the economy and to create great jobs. And we know that we need to do it in a fiscally responsible way because it is so important to continue on the path we're on. For five months now, inflation has been within the Bank of Canada's target range. That is good news, but we have more work to do so that we can support the Bank of Canada in lowering rates because we know that that will bring relief to Canada and Canadians. Thank you very much.